Elon Musk says SpaceX could take passengers into space by next year. Yes, next year. And the cost could be billions lower than originally thought. Now, on the weekend, the Silicon Valley billionaire unveiled a prototype of the rocket he says will launch his Starship to Mars. Rachel Crane is here with me. I mean, this is fascinating. I was want to hear how he thinks he's going to get there in a year, especially since we're not anywhere close, we don't think so far, and how much it's going to cost. Right, well, so the, the timeline to getting people in orbit, you know, he's saying a year. Who knows if that will be a little slippery, but he says that in the next two months that they'll be um, sending the prototype Starship up uh, 20 kilometers, and okay. then they'll try to send it to orbit six months after, um, and then hopefully, you know, humans will be flying it. That's, that's his timeline within a year, but take a listen to what he had to say. I think this is the first time we have uh, real hardware of something that is capable uh, with a little evolution of, of being something that could create a self-sustaining city on Mars and a base on the moon. And Absolutely. You, you said tonight that you might be flying people in a year in this thing? If the development continues to improve exponentially, then I think uh, we could we could be sending people to orbit before the end of next year. Mm -hmm. You know, within a year, approximately. But SpaceX hasn't put a human in space yet. How are you guys going to do this in a year? Well, we will be putting people into orbit soon. We will be transporting astronauts for NASA in probably I don't know, three or four months to the space station. Yeah, on that point, uh, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine tweeted yesterday saying that yes. he was very excited about the event today, but he also said, quote, commercial crew is years behind schedule and it's time to deliver. Did you take that? Did he say that? commercial crew or SLS? He said commercial oh, crew. Oh, okay, jeez. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> interchangeable. <laughs> no, but how do you respond to that? And did you take that as a dig? Um... Well, I mean, first of all, everything in aerospace is eight years behind, okay? It's really a question of, r relatively speaking, which one is more late. Uh -huh. um, so the, the hardware for the high-altitude abort demonstration for Crew Dragon will be there in October. The uh, hardware for the first crewed flight um, will be there in November. Um, and so most of the work that is required from now through a uh, flight of NASA astronauts is... Um, a, a long series of safety reviews. So it's, it's not really hardware related, um, and it's really going as fast as we can make it go. If there's some way to, to make it go fast, I would make it go faster. Let's talk about funding. You've said in the past that Starship would cost between two and ten billion dollars. Are you still looking at that price tag? <laughs> I think it's you actually... Laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a big range. Um, I, I mean, I think it's probably closer to uh, two or three than it is to ten. Is that because of the switch to steel? The switch to steel is quite is fundamental. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's literally, that might be the best design decision I've ever made. I, I can't think of a better one. The steel is lighter than the carbon fiber uh, solution, uh, or lighter than the aluminum lithium solution, and costs two percent as much. So... In, in hindsight, do you wish that you would use steel? Absolutely. A no-brainer. The climate crisis. We've seen protests all over the globe this month, mostly led by young people like Greta Thunberg. Yeah. Does the public outcry, does that increase um, the urgency for what you guys are doing here? Well, I mean, I really view what we're doing here as making life multiplanetary as opposed to escaping Earth. I mean, I think like 99% of our resources should be on making sure that the future on Earth is good. But I think at least 1% of our resources should be uh, on making life multiplanetary and ex extending consciousness out to, to other planets, both for the, the defensive reason of uh, preserving the light of consciousness into the future, as well as uh, the, the adventure, the excitement. I find personally more motivating than the defense of uh, argument. Mm -hmm. So you prefer to be an optimist rather than a pessimist? I mean, I think excitement and adventure and uh, a sense of possibility about the future are incredibly important. Uh, otherwise, why live? 
Now, Paulo, what I think is so interesting is that switch from uh, carbon fiber to steel, him saying that it's the best decision he's ever made, design decision. Um, but it's important to note that they were able to create that prototype welded out of the steel, not in a factory, but outside in just a month. Um, so it just shows how easy it is to work with this material. And also, carbon fiber costs about $130,000 per ton. But steel, it's just $2,500 a ton. So that's how they're able to, or Musk says, that they'll be able to keep the budget closer to two to three billion versus that 10 billion number. Yeah, and, and that's extraordinary that that has been obviously such a component of why he's able to get there sooner and keep the cost down. So you guys were in Texas. You were, it was obviously very warm there. You yes. were telling me, well, how does Texas feel about being at the very center of all of this? Well, so where this location, this factory for SpaceX is located, it's in Boca Chica, Texas. It's right outside of Brownsville, about 45 minutes. Uh -huh. But there is a town in Boca Chica. There are residents living right there. And this prototype is in their backyard or front yard, depending on where... where you can literally they open li up oh, the no, no, I was in some of their residents' homes. You see it from their living room. Gosh. You see it from their kitchen. And not only do you see it, like, they have to vacate any time they're doing a serious right. test. Um, so SpaceX has offered to uh, buy their property at three times the value. But a lot of the homeowners, they're not wanting to sell. Um, or they're wanting to sell for a higher price tag. Um, but Elon Musk, you know, he's very focused on fairness, doesn't want to pay, uh, you know an unfair price. Um, so the residents, they all met after this meeting, um, after this unveiling of the prototype, to hear more from Musk himself about what the plans are for that spaceport, uh, for that um, SpaceX location. He, they're planning to build another one of these prototypes in just a couple of months there. So a lot of activity um, will be happening in the coming years in Boca Chica, Texas, as a result of SpaceX's activities there. And, you know, the residents, very divided on uh, if, you know, they're enthusiastic or if they're also willing to give up their property. Yeah. And some of them may just have a front row seat to history, though, which is also probably what they're hoping. Exactly. Right, exactly. Rachel Crane, thanks so much for bringing that story to us. Appreciate it.